Next special guest rolling through, our, our good friend, Jeremy Pena. I mean, we it, day. Hey, JP, we're live on the air, so you just get settled whenever you're ready. Yeah, just, just keep the biceps away from me, please, Jeremy. I'm <laughs> like, I didn't, I didn't get to the gym today. I'm feeling self-conscious. Now, I, I'm going to tell you this because you talked about the show seats I had. Yeah, I did. Yes, thank you, you Alex Davis, because it was remarkable. My, my point is this: we're watching Jeremy on deck, and I told him, I whispered, I'm saying, like, "Hey, lock in on my man Jeremy over here. Lock in on the arms." And Jeremy, what he does is he swings a telephone pole before, you know, because a lot of guys used to have. We used to have donuts. Jeremy, he decides to pick up this entire telephone pole and he starts swinging it. But what it does is it, it's beautiful on the right bicep because he sits there and waits. So, and then Alvarez will toss him his bat, but he sits there and he's got this, he's got this holding. man arm. And I'm like, yeah. bro, and okay. my buddy goes, holy God, I had no idea. Hey, you gotta, you gotta get that arm pump before you go to the plate. No yeah. doubt. Yeah. Yeah. You gotta look good. Look at, oh, it's okay. no secret anymore. So, so we had Lance McCullers Jr. on yesterday and Kevin asked, hey, after JP, you know, who's who's the sneakiest Jack guy on the team? But he said, Michael Brantley's been rehabbing for several months, and Dr. Uncle Mike is is yoked now. Can you confirm that? Is that true? I mean, Uncle Mike, man, if, at that age, if you look like that, you know, that's what I aspire to look like when I'm older. <laughs> uh, we always make fun of him because he always keeps it low-key, but he's got it. Hey, he's, he's got, got it. it. He's got it. Now, who works out harder, you or him? I mean, he's in there. He's in there every single day, you know, and... Uh, Especially when you're rehabbing, you got more time to work out, right? <laughs> True, true. Hey, so obviously game one didn't go your way, but we were talking at the beginning of the show about the experience that's in the clubhouse. Even for you, you're a rookie this year, but you were part of the taxi squad last year. So you saw how things were handled game to game on a World Series stage. Is it at the point where it's unsaid for this organization, or did somebody step up and try and reset things after last night? I mean, we know it was a tough loss, and it was a hard-fought game on, on both sides. You know, they, they came through with, with big at-bats and uh, big-time plays. But these guys have been here before. You know, this is not their first rodeo. So they told us, hey, that's game one. You know, flush it, and we're going to come back tomorrow. Yeah, that's the big thing. Like, a seven-game series, like, like, you guys haven't lost a game in a month. It's baseball. At some point, things are going to happen. But a loss is a loss, and a win's a win. And in a seven-game series, you know, you got to win four. It's not the first one to lose one. And I think we, go, we get stressed unless you've been there before and a lot of your guys have been there so it's got to be a little bit easier to kind of absorb and say let's get back out today right right so they, they've been guiding me through this whole process you know it's my first time here but they've been here what four times in the last six years yeah so you know they, they know what they're doing so no kev this is a downgrade for jeremy talking to us now because before he came up on set he was visiting with pd so pedro martinez had, had, have you met pedro before so this is the first time we meet face to face, but we we message each other here and there. But uh, it was pretty cool to see him. He is, has so much pride in your home country yes. and the next generation of stars coming out of the Dominican Republic. What sort of knowledge has he imparted onto you in those text chats that you guys have? So he just giving me words of encouragement. You know, keep doing it, keep playing. You know, play your game hard and have fun. You know, enjoy it. As you can see, Pedro is always a happy guys so yeah he just said enjoy it and have fun yeah he loves you guys man and i love that about him because he truly does care about you and care about his you know dominican friends and family and it's one big family baseball but one thing about him is his knowledge is is impeccable and for him to show the love that he has on the just all the youth and not just the the, the stars, stars yeah. you know that's not what he's about so that's something that when you get a chance to meet guys like that i love that you take that and kind of wisdom for sure, and he's a he's a legend in the island, yes. the Dominican. And uh, growing up, you you look up to these guys, and now you see them in person, and they're sending you words of encouragement, and it's pretty cool to see. Yeah, uh, I mean, he's the second Dominican Hall of Famer after Juan Marichal, right? And he, he, well, something he said to us in the truck yesterday as we were watching you during Game One, he said, "You know why this kid hasn't been phased by any of the moments this postseason." 18 inning game in Seattle here in the World Series even though he's a rookie is because he talked about lead on because the Dominican Winter League is going on right now he's like every single night it the, the standings are changing it's that competitive it's that intense is that true right so those Paris. fans you know I think I said this before earlier in the year you know in the United States we have all these big sports that we look forward to every single day you know football basketball mm -hmm. uh, boxing but in Dominican, all we have is baseball. So these fans are prepping, hibernating all year for that season. So once the season comes, you know, they go all out. And uh, 
Yeah, you, you have to win. So, I, 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 And I say this honestly. 1996, I played for Lisey. Escondido Lisey series were like Yankee Red Sox. It was amazing. I'm in winter ball. I'm scared to death. They all take me under my wing. I mean, you know, under their wing. But it's such a... I always said this to most of the American players like go play winter ball go understand what y'all go through when you come over here right because you, when we go over there y'all take care of us and our jobs take care of you here but it's it's the rivalry and the passion is is second to none right and you know it's it's about winning yeah. you know that's where you learn about winning yes. you know it's not about what you do you know at the end of the day it's about bringing a championship to the city you play for that's right you know and that's where in the playoffs you go one for five but the team wins and you feel good you that's know, you right feel good the, the city's happy and you know it helped me here because the Houston Astros have a winning culture so it was it was a uh, just coming well in said and doing it uh, we got to do we'll be doing world's greatest here at the World Series and this is the first one so you tell us hold it up and tell the people the your answer to this question what is the world's greatest baseball movie world's greatest baseball movie oof I'll have to go with 42, Jackie Robinson. Yes. Great selection. Great the, late, selection. the late great Chadwick Bozeman. I thought you might go summer catch because you did play for the Chatham A's and Coach John Schiffen, right? And, and Brian, the late Chatham Brian and he was Sir. a coach. He was, I think you were a part of his last team there in I the was. Cape. I was. That's cool. Uh, and uh, Max Herz, he, he was the broadcaster for the team. He's like, you got to ask Jeremy about playing in Chatham next time you talk to him. That, I mean, it was a great time. You know, the Cape League was, it was fun, competitive. And, you know, built memories and friends that, you know, I still hang out with till this day. Hey, and you got a chance to create the biggest of them all here in the World Series. Thanks, Jeremy, for taking some time. I know you're focused on, on the biggest Appreciate series of your you, life, buddy. so thanks for doing this cool. again. Thank you, man. guys. Thank oh. you guys for having me on the show.